Hi, I'm Jack Duell with jackinthenet.com and in this tutorial series I'm going to show you how to use Elementor Pro and all of its Element widgets. If you want to see what they look like then go to elementor2020.co.uk I've laid them all out for you so you can take a look at them. And to get Elementor Pro go to jackinthenet.com forward slash EP. There you'll be able to get the membership you want, download the plugin and then upload it to WordPress. By the time we finish this tutorial series, you're going to be confident in using Elementor Pro to make a beautiful WordPress website that gets you the results you actually want. So please like the video, make sure to comment and subscribe. Now, let's dive in. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a multi-step form with Elementor. We're going to design something that looks a bit like this. So we've got an image behind it, a slight background overlay, and then we've got a stepped contact form. So people can come in, choose the options that they want, and then move forward to the next step. And that really breaks down a static form into something more interactive. It's a lot more fun to use. And we're going to look at all the settings and make sure that you can send to email properly. So you're going to be able to get more leads from your website. So let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do is come up here, press the little plus button because I want to create a section above this one. And then I'm going to come over to the uh, widget toolbar and under the pro section, grab the form and drag it on into the page. So by default, that gives us this static form. So if you don't want steps, it's really easy. You can just leave it alone. It looks pretty good to begin with, to be fair. Over here is where you add in the content. So when you want a new item, we just click the add button. That's then created one down here. You can also go to an existing item, click the little duplicate button, and that'll copy it for you. And if you don't want something, you can press the X and that gets rid of it. Okay, so this is just the basic part of it. You can also give your form a name if you want to. Nobody's gonna see this. It's purely for your reference if you've got more than one across your site. And when you've added an item, this is where you can choose what you want it to be. So under here, you see we've got type. At the moment, it is text. So somebody can actually write in it. If we click on it, we get a drop down box of all of these different options. I'm not going to bore you with all of them. You pretty much just pick the ones that you want. For example, down here, these two are text boxes because they're for names. This one is an email box, and obviously that one is for a telephone number. And if I go back to the first step, you'll see that we had a selection box and also a date box, so you can pick from a date range. So there's lots of things you can do there. When you have chosen what you want, so I will go with telephone, You've then got the label and the placeholder text. So your label is what appears above the box and the placeholder text is what's inside. So I'll just call this mobile slash cell. And then in here, what's your number? When you've done that, you can then choose whether you want it to be required. If you turn this on, that means somebody has to put in that information before they proceed with the form. You can even come down just below this section and you'll have required mark. If I turn this on, you get the little star next to it. That's useful because it tells people that they have to fill it in. If you don't want the labels at all, you can disable all of them. That gets rid of all of them. Or we can leave them on and then individually with each step, you can simply leave the label blank and then that will also make it disappear, but keep it on the other ones. When you've done that, simply click and drag something into the position that you want. So I want the telephone to come up above the message and I also want the email and the mobile to be side by side. So I'll click into the email, come down to column width and change it to 50%. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the mobile as well. So change it over to 50%. And if I want to add in a surname to this option, I'll come up to name, click copy, click into my newly created field, and I'll change this to say last name, write surname, change it to 50% and change the first one to say first name. So those are the basics. That's how you add in the fields that you want and get them into the position that you want on your page. Now though, let's add in some steps. So what we need to do is come on down to add item and then under the type, come down to step. That's gonna automatically create two steps for you. So it's put one up here at the beginning and we've also got the one we just created, which is now over here. So if I come up to this first one that it's also created, I can give this a label as well. So down here, I called it your vacation. And then if we go to step number two, I call that about you. So that's placed the text under here. If you don't want text or you want to change this from being a number to just have text, that's easy to do. Just scroll on down and you will find an option that says steps settings. So if we click into this, this is where you can choose what you want to be shown. So I can have this as just a number. 
I could have it as just an icon. And if I do that, then underneath our forms fields, when I go into the specific step, we can then choose our icon here. You've got a vast icon library, thanks to Font Awesome. So you can go through and choose the one that you want but I am going to leave it as it was. So steps, settings, number, and text. I prefer that. You can also change the shape. So I like a circle, but you can have a square or a rounded option. And then these other options I will come to shortly. For the moment though, let's just look at the button. You'll see that at the moment it's justified and it's going the full width of the form. If I center it up, it'll center it across 100% of the form's width. So if I change this to 50%, it's gonna place the button here because that is halfway of 50% of the page. So I'm gonna leave this on 100, leave it on justified. And I'm not gonna worry about changing the size of the button here because we're gonna do that in just a minute under the style. For now though, underneath the form fields, what we want to do is now drag some of these underneath our option two, our step two. So I'm gonna click and drag email underneath it, click and drag the telephone underneath it, and if you do this and you don't immediately see the change, don't worry, just come up here, click back to our widget toolbar, that refreshes it so we can see those options have now disappeared. And if I move forwards with the next button, we now find them here underneath step two. So you can see this coming together already. Let's go back into the widget itself. And now all I'm gonna do is add in these extra fields and then I'll be right back with you. So there we go, I've added in those extra fields. We've now got a departure and return date as well as the ability to choose a destination. All I need to do now is put my departure date and return date on the same line. So 50% and 50% for the column width. And now I need a final third step because I wanna put my message under the third step option. So come down, add new, type, change that to step. That's now made a third step for me. I'm gonna label this as any extras and then I'm gonna click and drag my message box down underneath that step. So let's preview this, take a look at how it's looking. So it's getting there already. As you can see, we've added in our steps. We've got the same ones there. We can click the next button and it's gonna take us through. But I'm now gonna show you how to style this and change the name of these buttons. And of course, add the background in behind them. So you may have noticed while I was putting in these steps, you can change the name of the previous and next button. But if you do it here, then you're gonna to have to do it individually for each and every step, which is great if you want something different for each. But if we scroll on down and go to buttons, then you'll find this option where it says step buttons. So here we can change it for the entire form. So if I just change this one to say go, you'll see that's switched it down here. But I'll leave that one on next, and I'm just gonna change the previous to say back. Now I'm gonna head on back up and go to the Style tab. And this is where you can start to change the spacing between your columns and your rows. So if I increase the columns gap, you'll see we get more space here. And rows, we obviously get more space there, but I'm gonna leave it on default. I think it looks fine how it is. You can also change the spacing of your labels, which are up here. And you can change the text color as well. And you can even change the marker color. So the marker is for your required fields. You'll see up here, it's currently red. If I change this to blue, then it switches. So leave that on red, I think. And I'm gonna go on down to the field. So under field, you can change the text color here. So at the moment it's gray, I can change that if I want to, and I can go into the typography and I could increase the size of this, change the weight, make it bold, make it uppercase, lowercase, capitalize it all. But I'm gonna leave it on default again. And then beneath that, you have the background color. So this is gonna fill in your field section with a solid color. Now I'm gonna put this to white because if we look at my example down here, I've made it white because in a minute, we're gonna be putting this background image behind it. So I've got it on white, border color. I've left that on the default gray, but if you want to, you can change the border color. We can increase the width of it, but I just want to curve it. So I've got this curved look down here. So under the border radius section, I'm gonna change this to 30, and then I'm gonna come down to buttons. And again, underneath border radius down here, I'm gonna curve these up a bit, and I want to change the color of these as well. So I'm gonna change my next button over to be green, and I'm gonna leave the, uh, the background one on a blue, but I'm gonna have a slightly different blue color. There we go. I like the text color being white, but I am gonna bold it up. So under typography, I'm gonna change the weight to bold. And then the next thing to do is make our steps look different. As you can see down here, I've got different colors as we go across the screen. So I'm gonna to go to the step section, and then we've got inactive, active, and completed. 
So active is the one that you are currently on, inactive is the one that you are yet to come to, and completed is the one that you've already filled in. So if I go to completed, I can change the primary color to a lighter green. If I change the secondary color, it's gonna change the number inside it. So if I change that to red, you see that changes, but I'll leave it as it was, put it on white. I'm gonna make the active color turn to this sort of orangey gold. So primary color, go with about there. And inactive, I'm just going to leave on grey, because I think that looks best. The last thing I'm going to do is just come under typography and increase the size of these just a little bit, and also going to make them bold. Now we've done that, it's time to put our image behind this to start making it look good. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to my actual section settings, click into this, come over to the style section, and then under background, I'm going to go for a classic background and a single image. I'm going to go with my plain picture change the position to center, repeat to off and size to cover. We then need to give it some extra height so that it looks more like the one below it. So I'm gonna come over to layout and then underneath the height section, I'm gonna change this to minimum height and I'm gonna make it 580. Now that I've done that, I wanna put a slight gradient overlay over the top so it's back over to the style tab. And then underneath background, you have background overlay. I'm gonna choose a background type as gradient and then for my first color, I just want white. But then for my second color, I want a sort of orangey yellow again, something to go with the sun in the background. Bring the opacity down a little bit so it's slightly more see-through. I can change the angle if I want to. So I think around there. You can also change the opacity as a whole by using this slider. And if I change the location, you'll see that we start to get more white rather than orange. So I'm gonna go with something like this. And then all I want to do is come back to my widgets. Actually under the basic section, I want to click and drag in a title heading. Put that in the middle, make it bold. And I'm going to stick a spacer beneath it, probably around 30 pixels. And then if I come back over to our form widget, I just want to make these labels turn to white so they're going to be easier to see. So underneath label, I'm going to go into text color, make those white. And I'm also going to make the typography slightly larger so it's easier to see, maybe around 16. So there we go. Let's update and take a look at this. There we are. How much cooler does that look than when we first started a few minutes ago? So people can now choose what they want, click on next. We've got our back button as well. Put in the uh, information that's needed. Put in a number, click on next, and then we've got our message section at the end, and you'll see that these have changed colors as we've gone along as well. So that's cool, I'm done with the styling, I like the way that it looks. Now we just need to make sure that it actually sends an email to you. So if somebody fills this in, we need to make sure that you know about it. So back underneath the content section of our form widget, we need to come on down, and you're gonna find a couple of options here. The first is actions after submit. So if I click into this, you can add different actions. Okay, you can connect this up to an email marketing service if you've got one. The way that you do that is go into your particular email marketing provider, go into your account and find your API key. That's gonna be somewhere under your account, maybe under an integrations page, something like that. It'll change for each one. But when you've got that, come on over here under your WordPress dashboard to Elementor, click into it, and you're gonna find the integrations tab. So all you need to do is find your particular email marketing provider, say MailChimp, and copy and paste your API key in here and obviously validate it. And that's gonna mean that it then connects up with your form, okay? So you do need to do that first, otherwise the form's not gonna be able to connect with it, quite understandably. So what we wanna do though for this is just send an email. So I'm gonna leave that just as email under actions after submit. I then wanna come down to the email tab, put in the email address that you want it to send to. You can change the subject line. So I'll make this new inquiry. Under the message, by default, it is gonna send you all fields. I think this makes sense because of course, if you put in a field here, it makes sense that you'd want to know that information. However, if you only want to know some of the information, what you can do is come into the particular field in question, go over to the advanced tab, and then there you will have some short code. You can also change what this says, so I can make it first name, and that changes the short code down here. 
We would then copy that and take it down here to our email section. And then I would paste in here and I would simply paste in the ones that I want instead of having all fields. But I don't really see the point of that. I figure if you put a field in, you're gonna to want to know about it. So I'll leave it on all fields. Post in the comments if uh, you think I'm wrong there, if you can think of a different reason for that. Change the from email again. And then under reply to, you want this to be the email field, because if you're gonna to reply to the message, it wants to go to the email the person has put in on the form. Under metadata, you can take out the bits you don't want. So I don't need to know their IP address, but I do wanna know what date and time they made the inquiry and what page it came from. And lastly, we can go under additional options. And here you'll find custom messages. If you turn this on, you can change what people see after they've submitted the form. So I'm gonna make this, thank you for your inquiry. And you can also change the way that this looks as well. So back up underneath the style settings, you'll notice that uh, you've got this messages option. So in here, we can change the color of our success message if we want to. So if I make it green, in a minute, you're gonna see that when I've submitted the form. As a final thing, if you're having difficulty with this, if you're not getting emails sent through to you, then it's probably because you're on a shared hosting plan. And unfortunately, WordPress does attract quite a lot of spammers and that might be why your emails aren't going through. What you want to use is an SMTP plugin. So I'm gonna do a separate tutorial on this so that we can go into it in detail. But just to give you the idea, you want to come into plugins and search for SMTP. And my favorite one, it's free, really easy to use, is WP Mail SMTP. It's by WP Forms, okay, highly trusted, loads of active installs. So if you put that on, you're gonna find that your email starts sending through without a problem. Hopefully though, you won't need it. Let's find out, let's go in and submit the form. So I wanna go on holiday to Spain. Here are my dates. Next. Test message and send. There we go, there's our thank you for your inquiry. I'd probably wanna make it larger and obviously change the color so we can see it over the image. But now let's check the emails and see whether it's come through. Okay, so that email did come through, but I have to be honest, it took about 10 minutes before it turned up. So that is one of the other reasons I suggest using an SMTP plugin, because I find that just really speeds up the process. It's there in like 30 seconds, but this is the information that's come through. We've got our destination, we've got our dates, obviously the details of the person who's made the inquiry, and we've also got that extra meta information that I talked about. So there we go, that is one of the best widgets in Elementor, it's so powerful, easy way to create a contact form. The only thing it can't do at the moment is use conditional logic so that when you put in information on one step, it then changes what information is gonna appear on the next step, depending on what the person put in. So I hope they're gonna add that in, that would be fantastic. At the moment, you have to look at things like WP Forms or Gravity Forms or even Divi as a theme and page builder. That has conditional logic built in and I am gonna do separate tutorials on that, so watch out for those. But apart from that one thing, I absolutely love this widget. In just a few minutes, you can have a beautiful looking contact form, it's interactive, and that, I am sure, is going to get you more inquiries. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope that it's helped you. Make sure to post any questions or suggestions that you've got in the comments, like the video and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.